Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome once more to a podcast from McLeaver Clinic Electrophysiology. Uh, as you know, I'm Osama Wazni. I'm the section head of uh, electrophysiology here at the clinic. And today it's my honor and pleasure to have with me Dr. Roy Chung, who is the director of Physiologic Pacing Center and leading our effort in physiologic pacing. Uh, so, Roy, uh, could you please tell us why physiologic pacing and how is it different from the usual pacing we've been practicing for many decades now? Uh, good morning, uh, everyone. Uh, thank you, Dr. Wazni, for the kind introduction. Um, so, about five years ago, um, Dr. Vijayarat Yaraman from uh, Geisinger published uh, his experience uh, comparing right ventricular pacing versus his bundle pacing in patients who has greater than 40% RV pacing burden. What they demonstrated was there was a higher um, percentage of patients presenting with recurrent heart failure hospitalization due to RV pacing induced cardiomyopathy. In view of that result, uh, and also even uh, from our own uh, publications from uh, Dr. Cantillon, when you have a threshold of 20% or more RV pacing burden, uh, we we start seeing you know patients with with uh, cardiomyopathy, um, and they did not notice this in patients who has conduction system pacing, namely spinal pacing. This is uh, five years ago. So just to clarify then, uh, we're talking about patients who have probably complete heart block and they need a pacemaker. And the usual pacemaker, we have a lead in the right atrium and in the right ventricle. And these patients, there is a high um, percentage of right ventricular pacing. And that is associated with heart failure. That's correct. Uh, when you have now, a question, if you gave that, we are doing his bundle pacing. So could you explain to us then what is physiologic pacing and why why do we think physiologic pacing is probably better for patients than the regular RV pacing? So every patient, I mean every individual has a innate, you know, conduction his uh, system. And even in the setting of uh, high grade AV block. If we can implant a lead along the his bundle site and engage the activation of the uh, natural conduction system, then we will generate a very narrow QRS activating both ventricles simultaneously. So when you have simultaneous biventricular activation, is almost mimicking you know biventricular pacing or CRT if you will or even normal normal conduction yeah so be because of that you you really avoid the traditional asymmetrical uh, right ventricular activation prior to left ventricular which is the basis of pacing induced cardiomyopathy yeah. So basically uh, what the RV pacing does is actually asynchrony, where the RV is stimulated before the, the right ventricle is stimulated before the left ventricle. And that is a cause of heart failure. And it's like giving a patient a left bundle branch block because now we're pacing the right ventricle before the left ventricle, which we know now can cause heart failure. So that's great. So could you tell us about our experience here at the clinic? So we have a manuscript kind of under revision. Um, in our own observation, um, we have actually done both. You know, we, we there's two different type of physiologic pacing. We have his bundle pacing, and then we have left bundle branch pacing. The fundamental difference really is in his bundle pacing, you have a lead implanted along the his bundle, which is a insulated uh, uh, fiber. Uh, compared to left bundle branch pacing, where you have a lead 
uh, traversing across the right ventricular septum into the left bundle branch along these left um, subendocardium. So our experience is that, like most centers uh, who has high volume of uh, conduction system pacing, is his bundle pacing in general has a much higher capture threshold compared to left bundle branch pacing. Mm -hmm. So in the short term, it's not an issue, but we are implanting these leads for patients who has AV block um, or even CRT uh, indications. So they are going to be pacing a lot. And with the higher capture thresholds, we are going to run into a problem with premature battery depletion. And as a result of that, a very premature battery changes and subsequent risk of infections. That's great. That's great. So, so just to summarize quickly, the field has moved now, and you, in your own experience, have moved from his bundle pacing, which is protected by a sheath, basically, and the results in high thresholds, which depletes the battery much sooner than if you're able to just place the lead in the septum and and uh, pace the left bundle or recruit the left bundle with a lower threshold, and therefore the device will last longer. That's correct. Yeah, very good. And could, could you share with us some uh, examples of uh, what this has accomplished in a patient? So in our own experience, uh, both his bundle pacing and left bundle branch pacing uh, population um, none of our patients has had worsening pacing induced cardiomyopathy and none of our patients has uh, presented with uh, recurrent heart failure hospitalization or more importantly for crt traditional crt upgrade so mm -hmm. that is the uh, fundamental difference compared to a regular right ventricular pacing uh, populations so do you think uh, you would recommend now, you know, if any patient who comes to you, would you recommend physiologic pacing? Are there any barriers to physiologic pacing? Are there any cases where you will not be able to, or it's not advisable to perform physiologic pacing? So at our uh, center, um, our primary approach for pacing now is left bundle branch pacing especially in patients with high-grade AV block. Um, now, if you have interventricular conduction delay, physiologic pacing will not work because um, the delay is due to a pathological uh, endocardio, you know, endo, uh, left ventricular issue, really, rather than a, a conduction issue. So physiologic, physiologic pacing would not work on that. Um, <clears throat> In patients who has failed traditional CRT because of elevated uh, left uh, CS lead uh, threshold or diaphragmatic simulations, those are excellent candidates for physiologic pacing. And finally, um, patients who has uncontrolled refractory atrial fibrillation and uh, right ventricular rate, uh, rapid ventricular response and cardiomyopathy or elderly those are also excellent patients for these, uh, this therapy uh, in conjunction with AV nodal ablation. That sounds great. Uh, so thank you very much. So in summary, it looks like a majority of our patients who have heart block or will develop heart block are better served with left bundle branch pacing to decrease the risk of heart failure and recurrent hospitalizations. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Chung. And um, and uh, please join us uh, for another podcast at uh, some other time. We will keep you updated. Thank you so much.